I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. And this is Mountain Murders Offbeat. Yay! Coming to you every Wednesday. Oh, yes. Except for next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all up in the middle of the week. Wednesday, December the 23rd, we will not have an Offbeat episode dropping due to the holidays, but we will have our regular Mountain Murders episode dropping Christmas weekend, which will be the 27th. Yeah, it's got to take a little time off. So just skipping the offbeat next week due to the Christmas holidays. Yes. I'm very excited about Christmas this year. How about you? I am too. Now, typically, I'm not a Christmas person. I mean, it's not that I don't like Christmas, but I'm not one of those go all out to celebrate sentimental kind of people. But this has just been such a shitty year that as quickly as I could put the tree up, I did, like way back in November. I was like, we're just going to milk the fuck out of Christmas because it's been a shitty year. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel like that this year. I got my Christmas playlist. Oh, man. Got you're... some Easy e on there. My you're... favorite Gucci Mane Christmas song, St. Bricks. You're ready. I'm ready. I ready? Just... The only thing I'm missing right now, Dylan, is an ugly Christmas sweater. Well, I don't know what we can do about that, but I mean, do go to the ugly Christmas sweater store. Well, I do have or... a Christmas onesie with a llama and it lights up. I just think you're trying to get to the end of the year. I yep. want to be at the end of the year. Yeah, maybe so. For what reason? Well, you know, it's been a long one. Just to ring in the new year? Yeah. Because I look for an excuse to drink. Well, yeah, maybe. Pee in a parking lot, Make take some... off my shirt. Resolutions that you're not going to keep. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been resolved that I was going to lose weight for like seven years and I have yet to do that. So it's always fun. Maybe we just need to reorder our priorities. Maybe next year we need to uh, resolve to gain weight. Then I could meet my goal. Yeah. Or <laughs> it will. you won't gain weight because you never reach your goals. Well, it's true. Okay. What do you want for Christmas, Dylan? I just want my two front teeth. Well, you already have that. Well, I want two more extra in case something happens. To the two you have right now? Yup. Okay. What do you want? What do I want? Oh my gosh, I want all the things. You want all the things? I want a 67 Cadillac Fleetwood hearse. Really? I'll take that. Some okay. New, new boobs. I like the boobs you got. A ry rhinoplasty? Yeah, I like the boobs that you have at the moment. I think they're fine boobs. I always welcome new shoes. You have new shoes that have tags on them. I know, it's true. So there's that. I know, there's... we had this conversation the other day. I was like, oh my God, I need these Reeboks. They're the most 80s pair of Reeboks I've ever seen. And your response, you already own the most 80s pair of Reeboks. Yeah, and these were reproductions and you have originals. Original 80s Reeboks. Well, yeah, so. Yeah, so why are you going to buy that modern day garbage when you got the real thing? Well, because the modern day garbage remakes are really cute. You can tell they're not they're not original. Whatever. They're too clean. But uh, you were like, oh, but, but you've never even really worn those. And I said, well, I've worn them one time, okay? I just want to bring in all the shoes. I want to sit in my house being antisocial and just admiring my shoes. Oh, my gosh. You hear this, people? How many pairs of shoes do you think I have? At one point, it was like over 200. I'm sure it's probably still about that. We should, yeah. That's what we should do today. Let's take out all of my shoes and count them. I'm not going to do that. You should. It'll be no. fun. Let's see how high you can count. I don't want to do that. Your public education. If I can drink beer the entire time, then maybe I'll help you with that. All right. I'll let you have a beer. Oh, no. I need more than that. I need I'll like have one. two beers. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, Dylan, I have an interesting offbeat episode. I think it's interesting. We're going to talk a little bit about the Appalachian Trail. Oh, what about it? All right, let's get into it then. The idea of the Appalachian Trail came about in 1921, and the trail itself was completed in 1937 after more than 10 years worth of work. And they've also made a lot of improvements, and they always have changes coming to the trail like since its creation in 1921. It is maintained by 31 trail clubs and multiple partnerships, the National Park Service, the Forest Service, and the Appalachian Trail Conservancy are all organizations that oversee the trail. Most of the trail is forest or wildlands, 
you actually do go through some towns, roads, even farms, and it passes through 14 states if you're unfamiliar with the Appalachian Trail. And this is the region we try to cover for our true crime cases. We've got Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Wow. That's a lot of states. That's like the East Coast. Well, in 1949... A woman, a grandmother, actually a great-grandmother named Emma Gatewood, grabbed a copy of National Geographic magazine inside her doctor's office waiting room. Inside, there was an article about the Appalachian Trail. And the article mentioned that no woman had ever hiked the entire 2,050-mile trail. Emma Gatewood told her daughter Rowena, if those men can do it, I can do it too. You tell him, girl. In 1955, the 67 year old woman who was mother to 11 and grandmother to 23 set off for a hike. That's that's pretty amazing to have, want to try that at that age and whatnot. Emma Rowena Gatewood was born October 25th, 1887, in Guyan Township, Ohio, to a large family. There were 15 kids. I like it. I don't know. How can she still walk? I mean, really? Well, that she was born into a family of 15. Well, it? whoever produced those 15 kids, how is this woman able to operate Mama still? Mama Gatewood? Yeah, well, get Mama Gatewood. <laughs> it is a gate. You need to close that gate, Well, I girl. guess Emma's maiden name wasn't Gatewood, but her father was a farmer, and his leg was amputated in the Civil War. Afterwards, her dad turned to drinking and gambling, and so Emma's mother was responsible for raising the 15 kids. And they had it set up so that four kids shared a bed in their cabin. Okay. That's a lot of kids. I don't know where you put all these bodies at. That's a lot of well, people. you have to share four kids to a bed. Yeah, but even at that rate. Think how much that would suck, because if you had a brother or a sister who was a bedwetter, you had <sighs> to sleep in the pee bed. Well, I'm saying even at four kids per bed, you got, what, four or five beds, uh, four, roughly four plus beds, and in a cabin. I mean, you know, that's just a, I don't know where you put everybody at. I don't know, but I've spoken to relatives who remember sleeping like two to three, like, you know, in a bed back in the day. So our kids having their own bed is a luxury. Yeah. Oh, and it's a relatively new thing. I mean, this wasn't that long ago. I mean, there were families up until like the 30s and 40s that were sharing beds and sharing bedrooms. I wouldn't want to um, share a bed with my siblings. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I don't want to share a bed with anybody. That's a damn lie. Except you. Okay. Because you're pretty snuggly. Thank you. You're the first person I've really enjoyed snuggling and sharing a bed with, Dylan. Well, yeah. Normally, I'm like, get away from me. I don't like to be touched. I'm a really light sleeper. I know what it is. You're um, sapping my life force and my energy and heat away from my body. It's because I'm a succubus. And it's because I'm warm. When Emma was 19, she married a college-educated edu school teacher and farmer named P.C. Gatewood. Now, once married, her husband became dominating, and he also demanded, in addition to her daily household tasks, that she work out in the tobacco fields, that she build fences and mix cement. Wow. That's uh, all pretty hard work. Tobacco fields are rough, man. And burning tobacco fields. Yeah. Yeah. Just picking it and it coming into contact with your skin. It's a pretty uh, rough plant to be around. Burn all the hairs off of your arms. I've known people that's hung it in barns and picked it in the fields. And that's hard. That's real, real hard work. Yeah. And if you're interested in learning more about, like, raising tobacco, I early on did an episode with my mom. I think it's called Chewing the Fat with Mom. And she talks about being a kid and helping work in the tobacco fields sorting the tobacco like the process of being a tobacco farmer so if you haven't listened to our catalog and want to know more about country living you can go check that episode out she talks a little bit about it so within a few months of their union she learned that he had an abusive side he would beat her repeatedly over the course of their 30-year marriage she suffered broken bones broken teeth he almost killed her several times with his vicious beatings Oh, my God. 
Sometimes she was able to escape him by running out into the woods. Well, yeah, it, because he had one leg, right? Well, it was one of the. That was her daddy. Oh, that had a, one leg. I'm sorry. Pay attention. To I him. am paying attention. You have to keep on. I'm listening. It was one of few places that she found peace in her tumultuous life. So the woods, nature, that was her solitude. She really liked being outside. And finally, in 1940, she was able to successfully divorce him. He had threatened to have her committed to an insane asylum a few times. And with that, she was able to get a divorce. Now, at one point in 1939, the beatings and mental abuse drove Gatewood to leave her husband and their two daughters. She moved to California for a time. But being separated from her kids, it just grew, like, too much to bear. So she returned home and returned to the abuse. But then only within, like, a year later, she was able to divorce him. So that was good. Now, a year before her solo trek, which would have been 1954, Grandma Gatewood, and Grandma is what she would be called later. She's known as Grandma Gatewood. She began making plans. She took a job at a nursing home and tucked away what she could from her $25 a week paycheck until she earned enough to draw the minimum Social Security, which was $52 a month. And she began walking in January of 1954. She first started just walking around the block as practice. And by April, she was hiking 10 miles a day. Dang, she's ready now. So she is making plans. Grandma Gatewood told her adult children one day in 1955 that she was going for a walk. She didn't specify when she'd be back or how long of a walk she'd be taking. (laughs) She didn't say she was going to be walking across multiple states. No. And the only person who really knew the extent of the walk was a cab driver and her cousin, whom she'd spent the night with in Atlanta before setting off on her journey. Now, initially, she had tried to take a hike from Ohio and start out in Maine and had to be rescued. And rangers immediately sent her home. Oh, really? So she decides she's going to make this trek from Atlanta. And the article in Nat Geo had given her the impression that these trails were tidy and there were plenty of cabins along the way for sleeping. So with little in the way of outdoor gear, she set out on the walk. She wore a pair of canvas Keds tennis shoes. Oh, my God, her poor little feet. She packed an army blanket, a raincoat, and a plastic shower curtain and she put all those items in this handmade denim bag that she wore, kind of like a, like a messenger tote, like one of those crossbody bags that she had sewn. She left her home in Ohio in May, and she had the one goal in mind. Now, at the time, only five people had hiked the entire trail since its completion in the 30s. And most hikers today average between 25 and 30 pound packs on the trail. And that's got your backpack, that's your tent, your sleeping bag. Expensive high-end gear. A little bit of food. Yeah, and here's Grandma Gatewood taking off with only 17 pounds of gear. Yeah. Which is like a through hiker's dream to have 17 pounds of gear to be that lightweight. Yeah, but also... She didn't have anything! It's not adequate. It doesn't sound adequate. It doesn't. So once Emma Gatewood began her hike, she realized she had not properly packed for the trip. Yeah, because I, I mean I haven't been that up the trail, but there's just not cabins everywhere you look, right? No. I mean, you come across shelters. There's lean-tos and shelters. The most of them are open air lean-tos and um, you know a platform raised off the ground a hair with just a roof and maybe two or three walls. But and many of those are like added additions that have only been put in place probably the last forty or fifty years. Right. So I could imagine. So that... they were sparse when she goes on this hike. Yeah, and here she is with no tent. Or any kind of outdoor living gear. Nothing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. It's just amazing. She relied on trail magic, which is assistance from strangers who help supply food and places to sleep. Now, eventually, local newspapers got wind of her adventure and started covering her story. In Maryland, the Associated Press wrote a piece on her, which led to another article in Sports Illustrated. Now, after the hike, she was invited on the Today Show, and Grandma Gatewood became something of a national celebrity. Oh, well, there you go. She walked fast, 14 miles per day. Now, this was a 67-year-old woman with no real hiking experience in Ked's tennis shoes in the early, like, history of the Appalachian Trail. Well, it kind of makes you laugh when you see those people with the two poles and a a whole day packed full of stuff when they're just walking, you know, for the day. For five miles. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, a thousand dollars worth of hiking gear, two hundred dollar boots, you know, fifty dollars socks. Yeah. <laughs> Grandma bo- put them to shame. A Boy Scout troop that occasionally encountered her on the trail said that they were unable to match her speed and pace. Because she's just getting it. She is, like, very goal-oriented, this woman. And when asked why she decided to take the hike, she had varying answers. Some of those included, for the heck of it, she decided on a lark, and because it's there. Those are all good, valid reasons. (laughs) I love those reasons. (laughs) Because it's there. She ended her hike in September, becoming the first woman to hike alone the entire length of the world's longest footpath. In 146 days, she hiked through 14 states, took 5 million steps, and lost 30 pounds. So she made it all the way. She went through seven pairs of kids. She kept buying kids and didn't get like boots. She gained and lost altitude on the trail, the equivalent of hiking Mount Everest 16 times. And this is all at the age of 67. Wow, that's amazing. The five foot two great grandmother proved that we can do anything we set our minds to. She had no map, no sleeping bag, no tent, and she was also blind without her glasses. <laughs> Damn, dude. Makes me feel kind of ashamed of myself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Makes me feel like we need to set a very lofty goal. Yeah, we were contemplating walking in town for about an hour, and then we're not sure if we're going to do that. I know. In an hour, I can usually get in about three and a half miles or something. Yeah. So I'm like, gosh, do we really want to do that today? It's kind of cold and rainy outside. On sidewalks, and most of it flat. I know. After her first hike, she felt so accomplished, she decided to make this hike again in 1960. And then at the age of 75, she went back on the trail in 1963. Did she finish it multiple times? Yeah. She also walked 2,000 miles of the Oregon Trail from Independence, Missouri to Portland, Oregon, hiking about 22 miles a day on average. Oh, wow. I didn't know about that trail. Some of her advice for folks who were interested in the same journey, she suggested they make a rain cape and pick up some Vienna sausages, claiming most everything else you can eat You'll just find along the trail, such as ramps. But she didn't like the word ramps. She called them rampions. She said, ramp something you walk on. Oh, rampions? Rampions is what she called them. Is that what they were? Oh, is that ramp onions? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I I love ramps. Yeah, no, you love rampions. I love rampions. A ramp is something you push an old person up. (sighs) Yes, that's what she said, pretty much. That's what she she said. she walked like hell. By the time she retired from hiking, she had logged over 14,000 miles. Wow, that's amazing. In the 1960s, Emma Gatewood began clearing a 30-mile trail along the Ohio River, hoping that it would become part of the Buckeye Trail. At 80-plus years old, she spent 10 or more hours a day working on this trail. Though her trail never was added to the Buckeye Trail, she was pretty instrumental in creating the Buckeye Trail Association. And her favorite hike was a six-mile stretch of trail in Hawking Hills, which is a state park in Ohio. It connects Old Man's Cave, Cedar Falls, and Ash Cave. This stretch is now designated as the Grandma Gatewood Trail. She was the first to lead the Winter Hike, an annual event that became Hawking Hills State Park's largest program. She led these hikes for 12 years, only missing one before her death in 1973 at the age of 85. My God. Her legacy continues. She's been featured in a documentary called Trail Magic. And in June of 2012, she was officially inducted into the Appalachian Trail Hall of Fame. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah, there is, Dylan. Now you you know. You think if I go complete the trail, there'll be like the the Fat Guy Award or something? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. All right. Chunky trail hiker. Be like you smoked tomorrow a lot all the way up the trail. He did. Yeah. That yeah, sounds about right. His trail magic consisted of he, finding 24-ounce single beers along the way. That's how we knew he'd been here, and that's why we have this f- ticket for felony littering. I don't I don't throw any trash down. You better not. Leave I no don't. trace. I don't. I believe in that. Yeah. Her great-great-nephew, a reporter from Florida named Ben Montgomery, wrote a book about Gatewood's experience. He read through scrapbooks and journals that she had kept, and it revealed the extent of all the domestic abuse she had suffered. Oh, my gosh. The book he wrote is called Grandma Gatewood's Walk, and it was published in 2014, and it told her real story for the first time. Because many people knew her name, 
she's kind of you know become this icon for outdoors enthusiasts hikers mountaineers but a lot of people weren't aware that a, that this desire to go hiking really came from you know having this trauma well yeah she probably enjoyed being by herself and away and in full control of where she was going to go and what she was going to do it was probably considered like wilderness therapy for her I'm sure. You know, before that was really a thing. <laughs> that before it had been labeled. Yeah, exactly. But that doesn't mean people haven't been using that that way in that way for many years, I'm sure. Well, it's true. Just getting away from everything, kind of reconnecting with nature. Well, that's why it's so popular now, different forms of wilderness therapy, whether it's going on a hiking trip, a canoeing trip, something like that. There's multiple organizations out there that, that help people have outdoor adventures and it's coupled with like therapeutic you know benefits well that doesn't surprise me because it's just uh, you can go for a short walk in the you know real the deep woods and it's just nice it's so recharging it's nice to be away from pu the public you know roads noise things of that nature crowded sidewalks and just kind of you know it's quiet and you just quickly I don't know. It's just good energy. Well, that's one of the benefits, definitely, of living in the mountains. For those who do live in Appalachia, is that we have such gorgeous, pristine mountains, hiking trails, plenty of places to get outdoors and enjoy our natural resources. Well, yeah. If you think about all the different agencies and groups and clubs and states working together to maintain the trail system all the way up the East Coast, it's pretty amazing. It is, and I definitely would love to take some time, hike the entire trail. Oh, my God. I told you, Dylan, my goal is I want to take, like, the month of April and go hike for a month and see how far I can get. You'll have to come pick me up. Is that what you're going to do? I want to. Are you training yet? No. Well, I went on a three-mile hike yesterday. Walk. <laughs> it was a hike? Well, I mean, it was a hike for me because I'm so out of shape. It was just on the sidewalk. <laughs> it was through the river and across the boulders? Yes. It's exactly what it was, Dylan. I was trying to find Santa Claus up in the North Pole. I was hiking up some glaciers past the swirly-twirly gumdrops and oh, you, canes. Oh, you did some ice mountain climbing as yeah, well? Yeah, just, I, I took the trail that Elf, Buddy the Elf took when he came down to New York. Oh. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. Wow. It was pretty amazing. I don't know how you found that kind of landscape around here. Well, I brought you home a sugar plum. <laughs> is that what that was? Yeah. Mm. But you were asleep, so you just had a vision of it dancing in your head. Oh, God. <laughs> You've got to stop now. Okay, I you will. You need to cut that shit out. Well, this has been a short but sweet episode on Emma Gatewood, known as Grandma Gatewood. And I would recommend reading her great-great-grandson's book. But there are actually a lot of books out there published about... Grandma Gatewood and many other hikers have published uh, memoirs, biographies, autobiographies about the hikes that they've taken and other kind of famous hikes. So a lot of literature out there surrounding hiking the Appalachian Trail. Well, I got to say, uh, Grandma Grandma Gatewood was a badass. Yes, and kids. And fucking kids. I dare anyone to do that nowadays. Seven pairs of kids. That's funny that she kept getting kids. She's like, this she is just, all I need. She just liked those. Man, Simple. She should have been like the leading spokesperson for kids. I know. They should have given her like a sponsorship deal. No shit. I remember wearing kids as a kid, like in the mid 80s after Dirty Dancing came out. I feel like there was a big fashion surge. People ran out and bought kids. Oh, kids were all the, all the, Ladies had kids. Oh, on. yeah. And you had to wear the kids with your slouch socks and like your acid wash jeans tight rolled. Oh, my God. Up, you know. You definitely. That's exactly how you had to And be. I don't remember them being very comfortable. Well, I mean, there's not a lot to them. And I remember I had the white kids and my mom was like, maybe it's where I get my shoe fetish from. I don't know. But my mom was like one of those parents that she didn't like if my shoes were dirty. Yeah, so she was always cleaning your shoes? Yeah, so she would be like, oh, and those kids, they were white canvas. They would get filthy, and she would be like, oh, this looks, and was always like trying to bleach them and wash, you know, because she couldn't stand that they were dirty. Oh, but man. imagine how filthy those would be walking on the trail. And they would have to be slippery, too. I remember they weren't very, they didn't have a lot of tread. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how she would walk that fast and, you know, cover that many miles per day 
in a pair of Keds. I mean, they're just like slick bottom shoes for the most part. I know, right? Anyway, Grandma Gatewood, man, she's pretty awesome. She's a beast. She is a beast. Well, thank you for tuning in to Offbeat. Yes, and I have a very special person I have to thank, our newest patron, Elise. Yes. Thank you very much for your support, and you have brought us this episode of Offbeat.